Hello there. This is Matthew Corbett speaking. This story is called Sooty's Birthday Surprise. Hope you enjoy the story. Sweep was squeaking even more than usual. It was a very special day for him. It was his birthday. Matthew is taking me out to choose a present, he squeaked. Sue and I will stay in, said Sooty. The postman hasn't been yet, and there may be a parcel for you. What a good idea, squeaked Sweep excitedly. See you later. I'm glad he's gone, said Sooty when Sweep had left. Oh, that's not a very kind thing to say, especially on his birthday, said Sue. No, you don't understand, said Sooty. I wanted Sweep out of the way because I've got an idea. Sue sighed. She knew that most of Sooty's ideas meant trouble. We're going to make him a surprise birthday cake, said Sooty. Sooty and Sue went into the kitchen. Matthew has a fat recipe book with everything in it, said Sooty. Yes, said Sue, opening it. I've just found a bacon rasher. The cake section is what we want, said Sooty, flicking through the pages. Here we are. Extra special birthday cake. That sounds just what we need. Sooty got out the largest mixing bowl and a wooden spoon. I'll read out the ingredients and you put them in. He said. 100 grams of butter softened, read Sooty. Wait a minute. He fetched the butter from the fridge, cut off a chunk that looked the right size and kneaded it with his paws. That should be soft enough, he said, squeezing it into the bowl. 100 grams of sugar, read Sooty. And two eggs, that simple. Sue mixed them all together until the mixture looked golden and fluffy. I think I should just taste it at this stage, said Sooty. Don't you think your paws are sticky enough already? asked Sue. <clears throat> Delicious, said Sooty. I'm sure Sweet would enjoy it just as it is. But let's add the flour, 100 grams, and see what's next. I'll just turn over the page. 200 millilitres of vinegar, read Sooty. Sue measured it in a jug and carefully poured it in. 200 grams of dark brown sugar, read Sooty. More sugar, said Sue. Well, Sweep does have a sweet tooth, and it is an extra special cake, said Sooty. Next is the juice of a lemon and a teaspoonful of mustard. Are you sure this is right, asked Sue. It sounds very strange to me. Spoon it into the tin, and we'll put it in the oven, said Sooty. Then we'd better wash up. While the cake was baking, Sooty and Sue decorated the sitting room with balloons and streamers. A strange smell wafted through to them from the kitchen. Don't you think we should look at the cake? asked Sue. Not unless you want it to sink in the middle, said Sooty. When the music stops, turn your cassette over. That's the end of side one. Ping! The timer in the kitchen went off. Sooty and Sue dropped the garland they were holding and rushed through. As soon as they opened the oven door, they knew something was wrong. The cake had not risen. It sat sadly in the bottom of the tin. When they lifted it out, they found it was as hard as a brick. I've heard of rock cakes, said Sue, but this is ridiculous. What 
went wrong? asked Sooty. I followed the recipe exactly. Let me see, said Sue, looking at the cookbook. Oh, no, Sooty, it's all the fault of your paws. I never touched the bowl, said Sooty hotly. No, said Sue, but when you turn over the page, because your paws were so sticky, two pages stuck together. The last ingredients you read out were for chutney, not sponge cake. What are we going to do? asked Sue. We don't have time to bake another. There might be some dog biscuits in the cupboard, she went on. She was feeling fed up. All that effort wasted. Sooty suddenly said, Wait a minute, I've got an idea. Oh no, said Sue, not another one. Sooty rushed off to the garden shed and began to look through Matthew's tools. At last he found what he was looking for. In the kitchen, Sue was still sitting with her head in her paws when Sooty burst in. Here we are, the problem is solved. Yes, that hammer and chisel are very nice, said Sue, but Sweep doesn't do any woodwork, and anyway, they're Matthews, and he needs them, and I'm still fed up. Sooty put the rock-hard cake on the kitchen table. With the chisel in one paw and the hammer in the other, he began to chip away at it. Sue started to feel interested in spite of herself. She sat up straight and watched. Are you making something? she asked. Wait and see, said Sooty. The cake was as hard as concrete, but Sooty kept on chipping at it. Soon, a shape began to emerge from the block. While he chipped, Sue tried to guess what Sooty was carving. Is it a model of the Eiffel Tower? Is it a boomerang? Is it a useful doorstop? But at last Sooty was finished. He had carved a beautiful, large, smooth bone. Sooty wasn't finished. Let's mix up some icing, he said, in different colours. They decorated the bone with squiggles of icing and left it to dry. Sue rushed upstairs and fetched her best ribbon. She tied it round the bone in a large bow. It looked wonderful. Here comes Sweep, shouted Sue. When Sweep saw the bone, his ears swung excitedly. This is the best present I've ever had. However did you think of it? I'm glad you didn't make a cake, he went on. Matthew is bringing one home for tea. A cake, said Sooty, holding his paws out wide in amazement. As if we would make you something so ordinary. The titles of the stories available in this series are as follows. Sooty's Painting Trip, Sooty's Birthday Surprise, Sooty's Magic Tricks, and Sooty Buzzes Off. I hope you enjoyed reading and listening to the story on this cassette. I know you'll enjoy the others in the series. This is Matthew Corbett saying, bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>